In some parts of this episode, the vocals and the screen are off by a few seconds. Our apologies. If this bothers you, please just listen to this as a podcast and not watch it as an episode. Ready. Hello, everybody. Good morning. It's 11.07 a.m. on the East Coast, Friday morning. Hopefully, this video will be out this evening. If not, it will be out on Saturday morning. How are you doing, Stephanie? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's been a wild week, hasn't it? Very much so. And of course, you guys know Stephanie from spiritual perspectives of our great awakening. Um, we are going to be answering some of your personal questions today. And again, all the questions we take have to specifically be about you, no one else. Um, I will be putting links down to Stephanie's channel down in the description box below, as well as a link to her Venmo if you want to tip her up to you. That's not required to ask a question, but if you want to send her a little thank you afterwards, if we get to your question, that will be down in the description box below. Before we get started, though, um, the last video that Stephanie and I did together, we did with our in real life friend, Mary, who is a Reiki master. Um, just to get, you know, it, it's it's very challenging. And I know you know this, Stephanie, and I certainly know this. When you leave behind like your, you know, matrix job to then become a full-time healer, that can be pretty daunting and pretty scary. I mean, you've done that with the tarot cards. I did that a long time ago with yoga. And so you you kind of, you know, you're living a lot on faith. And you guys really, really pulled through. Mary has been getting so many emails uh, requesting her assistance in healing from you guys. And if you have emailed Mary and you haven't heard back yet, don't worry. Talk later. She'll get to you. So um, she's so excited and we're excited for her. And maybe um, in the future, we can bring her back on uh, the show with us to talk about deeper healing principles. And the, the don't worry talk later kind of is a, just like a good little thing to remember anyway, because sometimes even the spirit world, we're not given information at a certain time. And, and it's because we don't need to know it at a certain time. So maybe we should start that hashtag. Hashtag don't worry talk later. I like it. And if we don't get to your questions today, don't worry. Talk later. Don't worry. Pull later. All right. All right. Stephanie, is there anything you want to add before we get started? Um, we, we've been having um, wonderful, um, we had a wonderful uh, meeting with some of our uh, wonderful friends on Zoom yesterday. And it's, it's quite amazing just how many people we're meeting lately and uh, me and you. And um, I, I keep making this joke up. I'm like, yeah, when all this is over, the dust settles and everything, I I'm, I'm going to have a party with all of you there. Um, don't worry. It's not going to be an out of control party, <laughs> but um, just, I, I just want to give every one of you like a big bear hug, you know, because it's like, I'm so sick of the talking through the zoom thing. We just, we all need to come together and actually like meet each other. That'd be like the best thing ever. So Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. best I can do right now is big bear hug through the Zoom. <laughs> Virtual. Yes, hopefully, hopefully not, not, not too distant future. We'll be able to actually see each other in person. So, um, so yes. All right, guys. So we're going to get to your tarot questions today. Taylor would, might be joining us soon um, in, in the future videos if her uh, BQH sessions have slowed down a little bit. So that's exciting. But I do have my cards with me in case we need to back up. But Stephanie's got it herself she's i consider myself to be an amateur card reader where stephanie's like You're fine yeah. guys you've learned so much we've learned together really i mean there's no like a lot of times i honestly think there's no wrong or right way to read the cards to twist i mean obviously you kind of want to stick a little bit with what the meanings are and everything like that um but it, there, there's there's definitely like uh intuitive ways of reading the cards as well uh going off the pictures and whatnot i mean we demonstrated that very well last week didn't we bryce 
I just had to bring that up again in levitation. <laughs> the, baby, the baby gravy, the baby batter with the ace of cups. Yes. Oh my goodness. So cups oh my goodness. Cups are emotions. <laughs> so of course that makes sense that the ace of cups would be like the baby gravy. It's an emotional thing, right? So um, if you haven't seen last week's episode, I will place that in the description box. <laughs> like, what the hell are these crazy watching? So, um, yeah. And you know, one thing I, I see a lot of readers, I know that there are different astrological zodiac signs that are associated with each car. So that's not really something that I really jive with. And I know you never really talk about that either. Um, Stephanie. So, but that's, I know some readers will pull cards and say, oh, you know, like, what is it? The star card is the Aquarian card. The, um, emperor is the Aries card. The devil is the Capricorn card, but I don't really go by that at all. Like that does just does not resonate with me. So if any of you guys are used to tarot readers being able to pull out off Zodiac information off the cards, that's just something that we don't really do. And, and, uh, and despite that, like we, you know, like my, my sun sign is Aquarius. My rising sign is Leo. My moon sign is Scorpio, but, um, there are also other different signs that are in your chart as well, depending on where different houses are, are you know, with different placements and stuff. So it could really, if, so, if a reader says, oh, we have the star card, there's an Aquarian, uh, an element of Aquarian in this person. Well, that could literally be anybody because we have all these different signs in different places. And so that's why we don't really get into that um, here on this channel. But if you want to really go astrology enough at this point, either to, to read, uh, the astrological stuff and the tarot. I'm sure I'll get there one day, but like right now, um, <laughs> I can only yeah. learn one thing at a time. <laughs> and if you want to really get astrological read, our friend Tamara is amazing at doing that kind of stuff. That's kind of her, her wheelhouse. And so I'll put her link down in the description box as well for her booking with her. So anyway, all right, well, let's get started with these questions. So the first question I have is from Journeying Soul Therapy. Hi, beautiful ladies. I love your show. Thank you so much. In the past six months, I have retained as a past life regression healer. I felt called to do this work and I absolutely love it. Could you give me a little, sh a little shout out, please, to help build my channel and perhaps give me some advice on what I should do to bring in more clients? Okay, so we're going to shout out Jour Journeying Soul Therapy. This is your shout out and I will leave myself a note to leave a link to your, um, I guess your YouTube channel is what, what you have it up as um, in the description box below. But Stephanie, what is some advice from the spirit world about her and her um, her new career and getting more clients? Okay. And I just want to make it clear. I already cleaned my cards before we hit the record button. Bryce is my witness. So, yep. and if I blink a lot, it's because my eyes are watering like crazy from allergies. Don't ask if there's snow on the ground and my allergies are already starting. <laughs> Listen, every time I turn the damn camera on and these damn lights on, my nose starts running. And at first it used to bother me, but now I just blow my nose on camera because these lights get intense sometimes. And I was never a yeah. snotty person before this. It's only when I like turn that. <laughs> snotty. I'm not a snotty person. Like I never was, I was never one of those kids. You know how you had that kid in your class that like always had like a runny nose? That was never me. Um, but ever since... I guess it's the light. I don't know what it is. I feel like my, my nose is running. So a lot. I was always the one that blinked a lot. Cause my, I, I have like probably allergies nine out of 12 months a year, but the light, it makes my eyes water even more. And then it doesn't help with mascara and eyeliner. So I should probably not wear all of that on my face, but then I'll look like I'm 12. So before YouTube, I like never really wore makeup. Like I, you know, I was teaching in a sweaty Mysore room all day. Like what's the point of wearing makeup when you're a Mysore teacher? Um, it will just run. But then when I started doing YouTube, I had to like learn how to put makeup on and I don't even know if I do a good job of it, but yeah. Yes. Um, what was her name again? Well, her channel name, I don't have her name. Her channel name is journeying soul therapy. Journeying soul therapy. Okay. Give me one second. I just want to pull a couple more cards here. And I'm also going to pull an oracle for her as well. I'll reread the question again. In the past six months, I've retained as a past life regression healer. I felt called to do the work and I absolutely love it. Could you give me a shout out, please, to help build up my channel and, and perhaps give me some advice and perhaps give me some advice on what I should do to bring in more clients? Okay. 
And guys, if you guys are in watching this right now and you have a channel and you want to share her channel out on your community tab, go ahead and do that. That's what the world we're walking into is um, a world where we help each other. You know, we're all we're all just walking each other home. So we, we've got to step out and like really support each other. Absolutely. All right. I'm just looking up a meaning to one of these uh, cards here for the um, I'm using the crystal medicine. And then I pulled a couple tarot. All okay. So I'm going to do the Oracle first. So this is just saying um, she's worked very hard to get where she is right now and to be proud of that. Um, this is the crystal blessing. She will have blessings come her way. Um, I had the angels and the spirit guide um, Oracle here. So it's like kind of just opening yourself up to kind of, not going by what you physically see, but what you spiritually see, like put yourself up in the 5d. Don't worry about things. I actually got that card. This is like worrying when you don't have to worry. Blessings will come your way. Um, I would say she needs to learn to balance her work. Probably like don't overdo it. Don't underdo it, but balance out very well, like how you're doing things and, um, prioritize, uh, maybe time management is an issue. Um, that's an issue for me. So I would understand that completely. Um, no matter what comes at you, stand your ground. And in the future, you will get the blessings or the crystal blessings. Um, and then let me see if I can pull an affirmation card for her really quickly. I got this little itty bitty deck. And I will say, too, what while I'm, yeah, while sorry, you're pulling, I love how you said, like, don't you know, be proud of the work that you've done. And I know mm -hmm. um, for anybody in the spiritual world, I say this to my students all the time, because in, in my line of work with Ashtanga Yoga, it's a really hard practice. And the Mysore room is a room of, of critiquing. You go there to be critiqued. And I always have to remind my students that, you know, you're a badass. Like, even though we're sitting here critiquing everything and helping you, pushing you to go further, you have to step back and realize like how strong and powerful you are. And so I think that's really important for all, everybody right now to look at everything you've gone through and everything you've overcome, even just as a collective um, over these past few years, everything we've gone through and everything we've overcome together and the fact that we're still here and we're still smiling. So yeah, always pat yourself in the back for that. So I have the no limitations card. It says you are a celestial being with unlimited potential. There is much for you to share. And then I, I got on the bottom, the creation card. Being creative is, also, is always a wonderful way to uh, witnessing and unfolding your limitless creative soul, so which goes kind of like hand in hand. So just do what you're led to, you know, um, connect with the spirit world and you won't be misled if you're following the spirit world. You won't be misled if you're following your intuition and your guides and everything. God is never going to steer you in the wrong direction. That's one thing I've learned about God. God always steers you in the right direction. We just have that free will, whether we're following what direction God wants us to go in or not. That's the key. And it's all up to you. Yeah. And I think all these um, paths of spiritual healing, regardless of whether you're doing past life regression or Reiki or yoga, whatever tarot cards, they're going to, I think the need for this is going to be amped up more and more and more, especially when we cross, cross that line where there's going to be a lot of healing needed for those of us who have not been awake for this journey. I mean, there's going to be healing needed for those of us who have been awake on this journey. Um, so I can't imagine the amount of the high demand other people, human beings are going to need, you know, when they realize everything that we've been realizing so so yes so stand your ground if this is what you're meant to do and this is what you feel like you're called to do then that's what you're meant to do and that's what you're called to do all right next question from violet moon thank you steph and bryce and taylor for everything you do my question i feel like the universe has been conspiring to make me stick sit still for a couple of years now I don't much care for it. So I try to start doing things and moving forward, but I hit roadblocks in every direction. And there's really nothing I can do to get uh, by them right now. What's going on? Am I supposed to be patient or am I just making excuses and need to work harder? So let's see what the uh, cards have to say for Violet Moon. And pa Patricia Johnson commented under that and said, I feel the same way. Like I have been placed in isolation, surrounded by people, yet very much in a space alone to work on myself. And Patricia, I agree with that. It's like um, Mark Atwood calls what we've gone through is actually spiritual quarantine. 
Um, for those of us that are awake, like we've been forced to kind of be in a little bit of isolation. And a lot of that has been for a lot of people to have those dark, the night of the dark soul, um, that journey of going through everything and your thought patterns and reevaluating everything. And that's definitely necessary um, in any spiritual practice. <laughs> and, and the fact that we're all, a, the, the earth is ascending and we're along for the ride, obviously that's the Mac daddy of all spiritual practices. So for sure, Patricia, for sure that isolation is probably something that a lot of people have definitely felt and it definitely realized is necessary to move forward. So before I, um, Pulled the cards I intuitively already heard kind of a little bit, um, which I'll go into in a second. I'm just going to pull uh, an oracle or two here. Um, this is something that is like literally every single read that I do this question. And actually, I just got more of an answer with the oracle cards. So... And sometimes I will say too, sometimes that isolation is a time of rest as well. Um, I, Violet, I'm somebody that's constantly moving, constantly need, I'm Vata, my dosha is Vata. So I'm very like, I have to constantly be doing something. And so actually accepting rest has been a practice for me in itself in a lot of ways. And that, that, you know, you think about if, if you, if you're working out really hard and you're tearing your muscles down and rebuilding them, there needs to be at least a day or two where your muscles get to, to be rejuvenated through rest. Same thing with your spirit, same thing with your mind. So um, so I, I totally get that need to like constantly be moving, even when you think the universe is trying to tell you to chill for a moment. All right. So I'm going to start off with the tarot first. So I get the Ten of Pentacles, which is usually like, as, as you can see, like there's abundance. Um, there's family right there. Um, I feel like um, this the Ten is also an ending number. So I feel like... Um, Probably you were having a lot of things removed out of your life during this period of time. And it was more of a rest, grieving, dark night of the soul, um, start, starting to study your own self. Start, start, uh, wow, I'm tongue twisted there. Um, <laughs> and it was just kind of like a, a couple of years to really um, probably gain a lot of knowledge. Um, I'm getting a lot of times to... Um, this time of rest is really to truly remove the old stand in or negative energies that we do carry within us. Um, there are changes that are coming in play here. This is the fool um, in the I'm not saying it's, it's not calling you, you a fool. It's not that it's, they, it talks about the fool's journey where it's like you're gaining you know, knowledge and everything like that and, and changing for the better. Um, the reason um, I think you're going through this is honestly, it's very spiritual with that temperance card, but it's like there's stuff on the other side of all of this that you don't quite understand yet. And this is part of the human experience because we're not 4D yet. Our third density bodies really don't understand a lot just going forward yet. Um, and uh, it looks like, you're going to have an offering of some kind going forward. Now, what I got off of the um, Oracle the card, card was actual. Can I, see that, that? Can, I see that card again? can I see that card again? The offering? Look at those flowers. Mm. I'll take an offering of flowers any day, especially red roses. Red roses are gorgeous. Anyway, sorry. I never <laughs> noticed that, that card before. So anyways, I also feel like, too, you might be standing um, – so this is like, I feel like you're definitely a strong person because I have the willpower card. But I also feel like you might be doing some traveling in your sleep and that's why you kind of have to take it easy. So that kind of um, affirmed what I was intuitively thinking as well. A lot of us are, we're, we're astro traveling places and yeah. Like this morning, just, just an example. I, I just wanted to know for shits and giggles. Have I traveled to another planet in this lifetime that I'm not quite aware of? And I got, yes. So it's in my sleep because our dream space, we can do those kind of things. We're very magical beings. Um, I also, I mean, I want you to take a look at this too. And, and Bryce, you can tell me what you think. I got the moving forward and the teacher card. So I'm almost get, getting like, as we're moving forward and everything, it's like, you're going to probably be um, 
teaching people about the truths of everything. So you're probably getting all this knowledge. You're after traveling in your sleep or battling in your sleep. So you kind of needed that rest, but this was also a time to gain a lot of knowledge. So when we're going forward, people will come to her, you know, and, and she's going to be a beacon of light in that time period. Yeah. And I will say the Cassiopeians always laugh and say, rest now. This is the resting period because the real work's coming later. And so even though it's like crazy to think that, but this is the time of solitude. And um, there's also this theory of cocooning uh, in spiritual practices that a lot of times you will cocoon uh, before a big change happens to you spiritually. Sometimes cocooning for some people looks like weight gain. Sometimes cocooning would be just isolating yourself. And then all of a sudden a big change comes with the full card could be that, that big flip of a change. Um, and I will say too, two kind of different analogies, you know, if you're driving a car, especially in the United States where we drive on the uh, right side of the road, if you have to come, if you come to a stop sign and you have to make, or if you're not even at a stop sign, if you have to make a left turn, what do you do before you make a left turn in that car? The car has to stop. Has to actually stop before you change directions. And so sometimes when we have these like forced pauses in our lives, it's because something's about to change direction for you. Um, and that shouldn't be scary or anything like that because your higher self already knows because you already agreed to all of this anyway. Now, another thing though that will happen sometimes in a fear based state, um, and I know this, we were actually talking about this before we started filming, you know, it, it, I, I for me as a teacher, when I was teaching Mysore full time, every time a student was about to make a breakthrough in their physical practice, something was about to open in their body. They're about to get that leg behind their head or they're about to like catch their ankles in a back bend. Right before that moment of breakthrough would happen, it would be like the worst week of their life. They would be sore. They would feel tight. They would be emotional. Like all of a sudden, all this stuff would come up. And it's almost like because the body and more importantly, the mind, because the body is, just does what the mind tells it to do. Um, whenever there is something, uh, there's a precipice of change that's happening. Sometimes the body or the mind will go, whoa, 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 whoa. We need to pull back because we don't know what this change is. I don't know what this is over here. And so I'm going to pull you back into what I do know. And so that's kind of where we have to have that discernment in our own journey. Um, are we in a place of pause that's not based in fear, like that car that just stops before making that left turn? Are we in a place of pause because it's fear-based? And if, as Tamara says, a good way to figure out whether it's fear-based or a gut intuition is that fear makes sense. The gut intuition does not. And so, and that's something that Stephanie and I can't really answer for you. That's something you have to answer for yourself is what is that pause for you? But it does look like from the cards that that pause for you is you at that intersection where you have to now take this left turn. And that's why you're coming to this like pause for a second before things change direction. Um, I hope that makes sense. So, all right. So let's go into the next question. This is from Bonnie Boss. Hello, beautiful souls. I can't wait to see you all in person. Us too, Bonnie. We're going to give you a big bear hug, as Stephanie says. I love all the work you are doing. I know it's tiring, but it's worth it in the end. Thank you so much. Yes, it does get very tiring. Bonnie, as you can hear, my voice is a little scratchy right now, but it is worth it. We are strong, beautiful light workers. My question is, am I a water or fire element? Okay, I lied. I got two questions. Are my sinus headaches? I've had my whole life significant anyway. Thank you so much, ladies. I hope you have a wonderful day and week. Is she a water or a fire element? Well, first of all, Bonnie, from my understanding, first, you need to look at your, um, your sun sign. Um, so my sun sign is, is Aquarius. So I'm an air. That's my element from my sun sign, but my rising is Leo. So it's fire. And my, my moon is Scorpio. So that's, that's water. Um, but you also need to look at your dosha as well. Um, so I'm Vata. So again, that's air. I have double air. Um, that's Vata. I'm Vata. Pitta. Pitta is fire. So I have double air fire going on with me and my complete disposition. So do you know the car, can the cards give us any indication? I'm not that advanced when it comes to that kind of stuff yet. I can answer the other, but it's fascinating because I know Bonnie. <laughs> She's been a huge help for my groups and everything. And um, actually, oh, cool. my my ring light is courtesy of Bonnie. <laughs> Fantastic. 
was talking Yo. about ring lights earlier, so I just had to bring that up. Um, yeah, Bonnie is like such a good person. So shout out to you, Bonnie. But let's figure out about your sinus infect or your sinus issues. I don't know. Now, sinus in the Ayurvedic dosha um, understanding, and this is why it's weird for me, sinus issues are kapha issues, um, and those are earth-based, water earth. So that could be a sign that you are water earth. Um, that's why it's weird for me that my nose runs under the lights because I'm not, I'm not a snotty person because I'm not, I'm not kapha. I'm Vata Pitta. I wish I had more kapha in me. Um, so, so that could be a sign, Bonnie, that if you have been having sinus issues a lot, that could be a kapha, uh, which is water, water earth. So, but we'll see what the cards have to say. And actually what I can do, Stephanie, cause my email gets so jammed packed that I know I'm, I don't get to everybody. Um, I sent you a worksheet, uh, the Vata Pitta Kappa worksheet a long time ago, but I can send it to you again. And if any of your clients want that worksheet to, um, understand their dosha, I'll, you can give it to them if you want. I still have it. I believe by the way, I can, I can send it again if you've lost it or anything. Cause that's really the dosha system really changed my life. 100% changed my life. The Ayurvedic understanding of disposition and energy. So, um, if that's something you're not familiar with, it, we can get you started on that journey too. All right. So according to the cards here, um, I actually know a little bit about Bonnie's story. I'm not going to go into it because it's very personal to her, but I know she's gone through um, just slightly putting it. It's the same thing I've gone through in my life. Um, it's like a lot of probably nasty words coming at her, to put it lightly. Like, um, a lot of us have gone through this uh, stuff that we hold within our body. So if someone speaks nasty to you on an everyday basis, you start to hold that within yourself. It's like her body was freeing herself of that negative energy. So um, that can all the way go, go all the way to childhood. Um, and just, and just knowing Bonnie a little bit, that's kind of what I was picking up. Even in the cards, I would have picked up the same thing, but definitely strong. Um, I'm strongly picking that up that it had a lot to do with a lot of negative energy that was pent in um, to her body uh, due to words or actions of another person that were not so good. And then I pulled the freedom card in my crystal oracle deck. Um, and it was like, it's, it's freeing, Bonnie is freeing you of that negative pent up energy. Um, so it's releasing to let in the new. Awesome. Awesome. So the next question comes from Fireball 10, 1121. Now this might be a little bit intense. And so um, Fireball, you might want to actually contact St uh, Stephanie privately for reading, but I'll go ahead and try to read through this because some of these words I'm going to have to uh, change up a little bit because we can't say them on YouTube. He asked, I have tried asking a few questions, but I realized that they were the wrong questions. They might not have been fireball. Sometimes we miss questions. Um, it's just, it's not on purpose. It's just so many come in that I might've just accidentally missed it. He said, I've always been an outsider. My family were transient after my father was forcibly moved from the earth realm. The person who removed his father from the earth realm had people looking for us and would appear in the middle of the night, forcing us to flee and start over many times. Ten, uh, Fireball Tem, that is horrific. I am so sorry you had to go through that. Talk about some trauma. That must have been terrifying for you. If you have time to do a reading for me, I'd be eternally grateful to know which one of the soul tribes I belong to. That we can do. We can ask Tim... Um, what our ask and see Tem's higher self and ask what soul tribe soul family he belongs to. And Tem, once again, I will put a, a link to Stephanie's website down in the description box below. If you want to do a more private reading with her to go through some of this really horrific stuff, it seems like you went through as a child. And again, my heart goes out to you. That is really traumatic. I'm so sorry. So I'm going to douse on this one because, um, I need to actually get a, a, a word. Okay. So are we asking about planet? What, where is his soul from basically? So for Tim's, I'm, I'm assuming Tim is his uh, first name. His, his username is fireball Tim, Tim, excuse me, fireball Tim 1121. So Tim I fireball Tim, your higher self. 21. Can I channel your higher self? Yes. 
Is this for our highest good? Yes. Is there anything on my board that can manipulate the answers? No. Where is your soul from? Is this a planet? I've never heard of this planet before. Um, I would definitely try to book with me, Tim, if you if you can. Um, because that way I can have your energy coming through the computer. Um, and it could just be a quick, simple... It, it, 10, 20 minute. That's fine, too, a half an hour. Um, it doesn't have to be like a full hour. I'm getting a planet I've never heard of before. So again, I'm not sure if it's accurate because I um, usually when I channel somebody, I, I think holographically of that person. And so their energy comes through um, and I don't know what Tim looks like. So um, it could, this is, I got a uh, graph um, So it's G-R-A-F-M. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that planet before. There's thousands of planets that are in you know, inhabited. So that is one I've never heard of before, but um, I definitely suggest doing a reading with me if, if Tim can. Yeah. And um, yeah, there are so many planets that we, and it could, that could have been the light. We sometimes the, when you douse, it'll give you the light language, which is very annoying because it just doesn't make any sense to us, but it's giving us like the actual spell kind of the, Anyway, it gives it, it's kind of like when you see Sanskrit, because Sanskrit's a language that it kind of speaks. So when you see it written in English, it's using English letters, but the Sanskrit is actually character characters. So same thing with the light language. I think they're trying to give us like English letters for what it sounds like the planet is in the light language. So that could be it as well. But yes, Tim, if um, I will stick again, Stephanie's website down in the description box below, if you want to get in touch with her privately and see if she can even do a full to figure out what's going on with that, your family. Gosh, man, that's like, still my heart goes out to you. That's, that's a lot to have to deal with as a child, especially. All right. So the next question comes from little miss angel five. Hi Bryce. I would like to pose a question in relationship to mother earth with what the human race has been going through since the big V officially began and how it has impacted us on so many levels. How is the energy of mother earth feeling coping with it? Also, I hope I'm putting this across correctly as I believe that earth holds her own energy and awareness. And I'm curious what she thinks of it all. Yes. Little miss angel five. I, I totally understand what you're saying. And that does go with the law of one, because again, the law of one states that earth herself is ascending as well, not just the human beings on the planet. So, and we know from other, like our friend Tamara always says mother earth's fighting back right now, but let's see what the cards have to say about mother earth and how she feels about all the, um, the craziness that's been going on with this nefarious uh, group of people. Guys, if you see black stuff on my hands, just so we had to pause filming for a second because something was coming through. So that's from smudging. So I don't, you never know on YouTube, people re, uh, leave weird comments sometimes. I literally, Stephanie, I literally just had to smudge our, our laptops a little bit there for a second. So that's, if you see that, that's what that is. That's from smudging. You know, the usual, the it's usual, the usual what we go yeah. through. Yeah. Okay. So Mother Earth is, um, I think, and I, I'm just getting this intuitively channeling right now. So Mother Earth is like the, um, what we would call our Mother God. So we have Mother, Father, God, and the Earth aspect of it is like the motherly, like the womb, the birthing of, right? Um, and I, I want to just say that um, Mother Earth is like super, super proud of us right now. This is our consciousness rising um and if you look at this card it looks like there's a lot of healing going on underground right with those pentacles so this is physical healing physical manifestation um i have the sun card so that's definitely healing and again the ace of swords so the raising of consciousness um and i feel like too um Mother Earth is taking some time for herself to heal. So that's like a solitude card. And I know that sounds kind of interesting as we're talking about a planet right now, but um, Mother Earth also has a soul too. So, you know, there's a lot of dark stuff surface, surfacing, coming to the surface. The light is shining on it where we get, again, you know, um, it's like the sun card shining on all of the bad stuff that has happened on Earth for the last, what, couple thousand years or whatever it is our history is so messed up i don't even know what the length of time is um and then i pulled some oracle cards so it's like i have the inner wisdom card right here 
So again, that goes back to consciousness. Um, this is unconditional love, which our earth is healing because our earth also loves us, wants us to be able to continue to live on this planet, regardless of what's happened. Um, there is some challenge going on, which we know of. Um, and then I feel like too, uh, I have the angels and spirit guides card again. And I feel like what that is saying is um, that we are completely surrounded and the earth is completely surrounded by her own guides and her own um, angels as well. There's definitely an army that, and, and Bryce and I know this very, very well. We have our army surrounding us. Everyone who's watching us has an army of um, spiritual beings that are guarding us, protecting us. And then I have the rejuvenation card. So again, this goes along with Mother Earth is healing. Um, she's also proud of us because our consciousness is going up um, into the five density or the 5D. Yeah, she's detoxing. Yep. She's detoxing. That's why the volcanoes are spewing out. That's why there's... Well, the natural earthquakes, we know there is uh, the, ro the Rod of God ones, but there are natural earthquakes happening. Um, to know the difference is the Rod of God ones are often 10 kilometers under anything deeper than that, which is a natural volcano, because I studied a little bit of this um, when I first got red-pilled. And um, so that's like the difference. And you can actually look up um, on, I don't know if Google has it because we know Google does censor, but it's, I forgot what website it is, but it, it goes over all the, um, all the earthquakes that happen daily and you can check out and see how deep they are. But all the natural ones that are happening, that is mother earth really just, uh, detoxing and the volcanoes, um, and what else, like, you know, other natural things that are not happening from a, what is it? The, the weather, the yeah. weather, uh, W E A P O N. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So that's awesome. All right. So Wanda Schloder, Schloder, I hope I'm saying your last name correct, Wanda. Hey, beautiful ladies. Thank you so much. All of your podcasts are absolutely amazing. Thank you. I learned so much in this great awakening. I have a question. Will my two grandkids ever come back home? They are my flesh and blood. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so Wanda, so, so how we're going to do this is we're going to channel your higher self um, and not your grandkids since they're two um, separate beings and we don't have their consent, but we will be channeling your higher self to see what your higher self has to say about the situation since your higher self uh, knows the full story at this point, knows the whole script. Four cards in, and I got to say an automatic yes. Um, so what I asked Wanda is if I channeled your higher self and I asked, uh, I asked it this way in my head. I said, Wanda, are you going to see your grandkids again? So I'm channeling your higher self. So um, things are going to become more clear in the future, whatever the situation is. And I do get the celebration card. I also get the temperance card. So um, yeah, the it's already happened in the spirit realm. So what a lot of people don't realize is before something happens on the earth plane, it actually has to happen in the quantum in the spirit realm. So I feel like um, it's actually getting quite close. I do also have the sun card. So all of those are happy cards. All of those are pointing to yes. Awesome. Awesome. All right. This is from Patricia Johnson. Yay. I love when you guys do this. We do too. This is one of our most favorite videos to film. I would lo love to know if I will be purchasing a new home and how, and how that will come about, or will I be stuck renting? Thank you so much. What's your name again? Patricia Johnson. Do you know that something is funny? I've never wanted to own a home. Never. I've never, but I've been always such a traveler, like my whole adult life that I've always felt like not owning a home was the best thing. Cause I could just up and leave whenever I needed to. But lately I've been thinking more about home ownership and like, you know, having my own land and all that kind of stuff. So. Well, in the third density world, it's not all it's cracked up to be. I would know. I never thought I would actually own a home. I do. It freaking sucks. I'm not going to lie. Um, but honestly, like, I think things are going to be so much different regardless um, yeah. going forward. Renting wasn't all that great either. So honestly, if I had it my way, I would just plop a tent on a beach and call it a day. As long as I had a place to shower and, uh, you know, as long as I didn't have to, like, use the bathroom right there, you know, <laughs> you know. I have a bathroom available to me i'm just like super simple like just put me on a beach just palm trees a beach i'm good um yeah and the good thing about anyway. where i live 
I'm like right in the middle of the city and it's, my space is tiny, but for what I pay, I know people pay less in mortgages than what I pay for rent each month, but I'm literally paying to live in the middle of the city where I can walk everywhere. Um, you know, and so, yeah, it is. But the nice thing is like when you're renting, you can just, when your toilet's broken, you just call someone because I don't know how to fix the toilet. I don't even know how to boil an That's egg. That's the greatest <laughs> thing about renting because we, we had a, a we had, I had a windstorm that came up here. Uh, let me see. It was like, I think it was in 2020, like the summer of 2020 or the spring of 2020. So I bought the house and the uh, shingles, the, the con not the contractor, the one who did the um, inspection of the house said, oh, you got 10 more years on this roof. And I'm like, okay, great. Um, no, not really. So I had some, we had this windstorm and all the shingles started to fall off the roof. It was horrible. And so um, when the contractor came, he said, uh, Steph, I actually know this contractor. He goes, what the hell? The person who put the shingles on your roof didn't even like nail in some of the shingles. It was half ass done. I'm like, so don't trust your home inspector. They, they, they don't, they just get, they get a lot of money and they don't really inspect. Just FYI. I know I went off on a side tangent there, but you live and you learn. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Beautiful thing about renting is you don't have to deal with any of that. You just call someone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it does look like uh, she is going to be able to have, um, you know, buy a house in the future. I do have a sun card. Um, and this is like an offering and uh, standing her ground. So just keep holding on to the uh, vision of owning a home. Um, I feel like you are going to come into abundance going forward and it's going to be coming to you um, at some point. I'm, we're all going to be getting abundance soon. I mean, let's face it. That's the reality of it. I know a lot of people don't believe us with Nina Sarah and everything, but it's a, it's a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Anytime I look into people's finances lately, I'm getting loads of abundance coming to them. So yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. This is from Evelyn Sullivan. Hello from Ireland. Love you ladies. You're doing great service to humanity. Thank you so much, Evelyn. Um, her Thank question you. is, my knee pain is, is my knee pain a hangover from a past life? I believe I'd injured my legs in two past lives. I know of, thank you much mm. love. Oh, we know Evelyn, sometimes knee pain is connected to the kidneys, which is connected to fear. So, which could be from a past life too, a hangover from fear as well, but we'll see what the cards have to say. And Evelyn, I don't know if you've caught my video on oil bathing, but you can do an oil pack on your knee as well. You can get some castor oil, heat it up in the, um, on the oven or the stove rather. See, I'm not a kitchen. No. <laughs> that might not go over well. <laughs> listen, listen, I had to take calculus in high school. They didn't offer home ec. I don't know any of this. I don't know how to boil it. I don't know how to do any of this stuff. So, um, yeah, the stove, the thing on top that has the fire come out, that one, uh, you put a castor oil in it, you heat it up and then get like a cloth, like a riptable t-shirt or something. And you know, something you don't care if you ruin, soak it in the oil and then wrap your knee in it and then put cellophane over it and sleep with it. And it'll help pull the the inflammation out of your knee overnight. So yes, no guys, I am not. You reminded me, <laughs> you reminded me, I need to try that. I watched that video like months ago and I've been meaning to get castor oil and try that because I have knee pain. I have joint pain and all that stuff. And, um, but now I'm going to be like, I'm going to call you and be like, so I'm hitting my castor oil. <laughs> <in the oven." laughs> Yo, I, I can rock laundry. I'm really good at laundry. I actually really like doing laundry and I'm a really good ironer, but when I can clean really well because I'm OCD about cleanliness, but cooking, I don't even know how to boil an egg. Like literally I don't know how to boil an egg. So, um, Grubhub That's is my friend. Tough to teach you going forward, Bryce. Grubhub so when I was, I, when I cook, I cook for an army, um, and I do not follow a recipe whatsoever. But it comes from like my mom's side of the family. So uh, they're Sicilian on that side. So it's like, you know, a little bit of dash of this, a uh, pizza pie yeah, you create, you know? <laughs> and so um, I don't know. I just, I love cooking, except since I've been red pilled, it's like I want nothing to do with it. I mean, I'll go back to it, I'm sure, once everything, the dust settles and stuff like that. I also like to bake too, like making homemade bread. But um, my specialty is soups. I'm really good at making soup, really good at it. So 
there's certain things I'm not good at making, but that I'm good at making. Um, but yeah, I do know how to use the oven and the stoves. <laughs> I love you, Bryce. The difference between the two. It's just, it's just that appliance that sits in the kitchen that I have to clean. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. So, actually, uh, so okay. I'm getting yes. This was a past life thing. Yep. Um, and I have the lion card. I actually feel like this was injured, maybe in some sort of battle of some kind. Um, and yeah, it's kind of put you out on your ass a little bit in this lifetime because that's like a yeah. limbo type of a thing. Um, I got another ace too. That's the happy ace. I'm never, at this. I'm, never, <laughs> I'm never looking at this card the same again. It's all your fault. It's all your the, fault. the explosive one, the explosive ace. All right, let's go in. Okay, so Robin Win Winnegar. I hope I'm saying that correct. Hi, girls. It's so great that you take the time to do this for us. Much appreciated. I had a thought come out of nowhere that my fibromyalgia was actually a spiritual attack and I needed to fight back. I was wondering if this is true. And if so, what do I need to get rid of this of myself thanks bunches before you even answer that um i'm gonna say it could be yes but also when it comes to body stuff and i'm gonna say this because i've obviously gone through spiritual attacks my whole life and i did struggle for a long time with arthritis the answer to this stuff it's not always like this is what i love about the hindu uh stories um if it's a spiritual attack or not, if you're having a sensation, uh, the answer isn't always just to have a, a cleansing done and get rid of it. There's always um, work to be done for you and you're finding your own power. You know, like um, um, why is the pain coming? If it's spiritual attack, okay, what? Like when I did my, I don't know if I've said this on a show before. So when I did um, a healing with Shanti over in Aquarius Rising Africa, something really awesome she had me do. There's this one entity I used to see a lot still as an adult in my bedroom every single night. And it would scare the crap out of me. And I would like pull the blankets over my head. Well, Shanti in one of the sessions had me actually go and get up out of the bed in my mind's eye and like stare at this entity eye to eye. And when I did that, the first thing the entity did was like disappear. Like it was afraid of me. And then I had to call it back. And then I had to ask it to show me what was in his hand. And what was in his hand was this like shepherd's hook, like with the candy canes. And she said, well, what does that mean? And I said, I all, all of a sudden got it. I said, these demons are here to remind me that I have gifts and abilities that I need to be using and I'm not using. And so even though those didn't, entities can be bad. If you know how to work it right, you can also do some deep work on yourself as well. And so if it is a spiritual attack, the answer again, isn't always just throwing some Florida water on it and it's and calling it a day. There's also work you have to do internally as well, which is what I've done also with the spiritual attacks that I've been dealing with, even though I've had healing and cleansing done, I've also done my own therapeutic. What is this doing for me? What is this showing me? What is this reminding me in my own path in my own battle if, if that makes sense so i just want to talk about this for a second too i have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia probably half of my life um it's actually what pulled me out of work um a year ago a little over a year ago because literally i couldn't function i actually could hardly walk um so i have had to take the last year um not only to have a dark night of the soul spiritually, but I had to do a lot of inner work and a lot of, um, ridding myself of, um, negative, uh, thoughts, negative, um, just past life or past, um, like history in this lifetime, um, junk. Mm -hmm. it, it needed to be purged out. I did pull a couple cards, but I'll, I'll go into that in a second, but um, I've been studying a little bit about, you know, the spiritual aspects of fibromyalgia. Um, actually, I used to get really, really ticked off when people said it didn't exist. But at this point, it's it's just kind of like a catch-all type of uh, diagnosis. Um, so it would manifest a lot in my legs, um, which, is, Bryce, you're helping me with a lot now. I'm learning, like, leg exercises, which I'm going to start because I started to flare up a little bit again. Um but that's like, I think a lot of it's ascension stuff. So that doesn't help either. But if it's for a good purpose, we're, we're, up, we're upgrading. Um, yeah. But, you know, there's so there's a couple different aspects of it. So one, if you are a star seed and you come from a higher dimension, your body hates earth right now. 
and it has a very hard time acclimating to earth. Um, it does not like this density. It's, it's like putting a bunch of bricks on top of you because it's dense, you know, it's very heavy. Um, we're going to be lifting up into fourth density positive, which is going to be very, very healing for our bodies. We're going to be going into our crystalline DNA, our light bodies, which is going to be wonderful going forward. You're not going to have to deal with this for the rest of your life. Um, then also too, a lot of it is, um, when you have a lot of trauma, I've had a lot of trauma in this lifetime. I've had a lot of past life traumas, um, or, um, you go through a lot of ABUSC, whether it be with, uh, a a romantic partner, a spouse, a parent, doesn't matter who it is, all that negative emotion gets stored up into your joints and your muscles um, and also your organs. So it will manifest into pains that are chronic. Um, so that's like, I've been doing a ton of purging. Um, I've realized who in my life is toxic. I had a dark night of the soul where I had to purge out all of those emotions and I did a lot of crying and, and Bryce can attest to this. I don't cry very often. I, I'm just not a crier. Um, I'm emotional, but like, I don't, if I cry, it's not in front of anybody. Um, so I, I really had to do a lot of work on myself and there's no easy way to go around that. You just have to do the work, right, Bryce? So um, the cards that I pulled is, I really feel like you have a little bit of maybe some inner work to do. Um, so there is the soul retrieval, which is like maybe do some past life regression stuff, um, self mastery. So learn your body, learn what triggers you and uh, triggers are good. Like you say, Bryce, you know, we learn from our triggers and then we grow from it. And then soul awakening. I really think you need to start probably uh, mastering yourself. Who are you? Where are you from? What are your triggers? Work from the, from that. And then um, I pulled some of these. These are called starseed cards. These are these little itty bitty cards here. So gratitude. So start showing. I'm sure she's gr she's grateful. I'm sure, but I'm not saying that. It's like show the divine creator uh, gratitude for being in perfect health, even if you don't feel like it. Um, I'm actually getting to show gratitude for the fibromyalgia. So what you can do to start this journey to finally rid yourself of it is to sit in quiet and ask the fibromyalgia or ask your body, what are you trying to tell me? What do you, I'm grateful that you're, so this is one thing too, that we learn in, um, in yoga and, and, in the East, in the Eastern philosophy. And I blame, I blame the medical industry for this in the Western world. We have this idea that if the body is in pain, we don't move it. We rest. Oh no, it's in pain. We rest. No, 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 no. Pain is change. Pain is teaching you something. I continue in, in Ashtanga yoga, the only for women, the only two times we don't practice our practice is if we have a fever or if we're on, on our periods, I have practiced with a broken sacrum. I have practiced with a cast on my wrist. You keep going, you keep moving because your body is your GPS system. Even though the body is nature and it's not eternal, it is like your roadmap. It's the Shakti. It's the expression of the soul. So when things come up, like my arthritis, what is my arthritis here to teach me? What is this fracture in my foot supposed to teach me? What, what do I need to work through? And when you start to take that power back too, because that, that's a power move. That's a savage AF power move. When you say, all right, I got fibromyalgia. You're here with me right now. What are you here to teach me? What are you here to show me? Instead of saying, yep. oh no, I have fibromyalgia. Give me all the medicine so I don't feel the pain. Then it's going to stick around because yep. it's, it's trying to show you something. 100%. And like, uh, yeah, Guruji, our, my teacher's teacher, Guruji, like he used to get so excited when you got the yoga fever. I used to get the yoga fever all the time. Oh yes, yes, yes. Correct. Yoga fever, total revolution coming, detox coming. Uh, you know, and if one knee got injured, he'd be like, oh, yes, yes. The next knee, knee then going, then it's got to go. The next knee, yep. then going. These things excited him because it meant something was happening. Something had sparked. There was friction in, in your body. And so your job as the holder of that body is to sit down with it and say, what do you want to show me? It's like when I had to get up and look that demon in the eye and say, what are you here to, to tell me? And so the minute you start taking your power back, the minute it'll start to, and it might not tell you right away. It might take a while for you to start to intuitively know what it's telling you, what it's teaching you, you know, and that's, and that's such a power move. It's such a power move because when that happens, 
nothing scares you. Nothing health wise will scare you again. Nothing. Because it's like, okay. And if I can do it, anybody can. I mean, I was literally like, I felt like I was on death's door. I did. I knew I wasn't going anywhere, but I literally felt like hell on earth. And um, also another thing to keep in mind is what are you putting in your body too? So are you filtering your water? Um, are you ingesting fluoride? If you have fluoride toothpaste, you need to switch over to non-fluoride. Um, there's heavy metals and everything. So maybe a heavy metal detox. You can research that. I have not done a video on that. I have recorded it like three times and it just, there's too many trigger words in it for the algorithm. So I haven't posted it, but um, I used zeolite and activated charcoal um, to rid my body of heavy metals. And I did that for like six months. And now I just do it every couple of months um, for a couple of weeks straight, just to kind of rid whatever I have put in my body. Cause I mean, we can't avoid it 100% at this point in time. Um, so eating organically is very, very important as well. I know it's expensive, but if you can't afford it, then definitely bless your food Ask, uh, you know, bless your food where it's not like your ritualistic Christian prayer, which I used to do. Now it's, um, I'm increasing the vibrational frequency of the food. You can do that with your words. Um, and you can make it so that it's nourishing your body and that you're blocking anything from, um, harming your body at all. And I do that with all of my food. I do the, my water. Um, I filter my water. Um, I, any kind of supplement. I'm off any kind of med now. I was on blood pressure meds. I was never on pain meds. I was on Neurotin, which was for nerve pain. And that is a horrible thing to be on. It's terrible for you. Um, but I, I was never on any kind of narcotics or anything like that, but I had to function at work. Um, I've, I've been on, trust me, I've been on enough medications. I know it does not do any good. So I took my medical sovereignty back. I actually made my own medications. I made tinctures. I made a blood pressure tincture. And so I put it in my own hands. And since then I feel, I'm not 100%, but I'm definitely 80% better than where I was. And you can do it yeah. too. Anybody can do it. And I'll tell you guys a story too, just, just to kind of reiterate what we're saying here. And this is not medical advice. This is just my own story. Um, there was a time probably seven years ago where I had this uh, propensity. I was popping ribs out a lot, um, which is very painful. And it was at a point in my practice where I was getting into really advanced stuff uh, physically. And so my body was going through a high demand every single morning. And I would pop these ribs out. And if you guys ever done that, it's super painful, like when it happens. And like the first time I did it, I popped seven out and I went to the chiropractor and had them popped back in. Well, I kept doing that every time I would pop, cause I, I do this six days a week. So every time I pop a rib out, I just go to the chiropractor, get it popped back in. And it became this like pattern practice, chiropractor practice chiropractor. And it was like, I was walking on this treadmill and getting nowhere. Cause the treadmill, you're just running in the same place. Right. And so one of my teachers said to me, like, stop going to the chiropractor, stop it. And I was like, but my ribs are out. It's painful. He goes, yeah, but your body is changing a pattern right now. And so it's kind of like when you, when you clean out your room, like if you do like deep cleaning, what do you do? You pull everything off, you clean it and then you reorganize. It's like your body's pulling everything out to then reorganize it. And when I stopped going, I, I allowed it to happen. I stopped going to get my ribs popped back in. And over time it ceased, it stopped happening. They just stopped. They popped themselves back in on their own and they stopped coming out. And all of a sudden my practice grew from there. And that taught me a really valuable lesson. And so now like I've herniated disc, but um, I really focus on my core. I'm not going to go and get injections anymore. I'm not going to do that. Okay. I've herniated a few discs. What is that teaching me? Teaching me I need to, to strengthen up my core because that's where my solar plexus are. Your solar plexus is your third chakra. That is where your power source is. And so the stronger you can make your stomach, the stronger you can make you at your, your physical body. It's the energetic body, the physical, the physical, the energetic. They, they move together. They work together. And so there's always another path to take. There's then what we've been trained to believe in the Western world. Right. And when you start to really understand that it is so powerful, you literally, like I said, it is a power move. When you start to realize that your body is your GPS system, not just necessarily for this 3d life, but for your soul, because your body is the Shakti of your soul and it's yours. It's yours, right? Nobody can be inside your body, but you, you know, unless you sell your soul, but I know none of you guys have done that, but you are the only one in this body. 
And so you have these unbelievable treasures inside of you um, that are just waiting to be discovered and only you can find them, you know? So don't let the, the matrix world distract you from actually digging down and finding that beauty in yourself. So, and again, it's not medical advice, guys. It's just opinions and my own experience. So take with it what you will. All right. Do we have time for one more question? Yep. Here's a twin, a twin flame question from Nicole Small. I'd like to know if my husband and I are twin flames or soulmates. There are so many coincidences in our lives that I'm sure we belong together. My uncle by marriage is his mom's cousin. We were both born on the seventh day of the month, different month and year. We were married on 2-14, uh, 25 years ago, and our son was born at 2-14. And as kids, we both broke the same leg in the same place. That's a lot of coincidence. What can the tar cards tell us about that? That's interesting, Nicole. Well, first of all, just say in general, not everybody has a twin flame. Um, that is not, there's only a certain amount of people. That is, a, um, as one of our favorite tarot card readers says, like the one that, you know, said to look at like a lollipop, <laughs> that one. Um this is a hard, the twin flame journey is a very, very, very hard journey. It's, it's very emotional. It's very, um, it takes a lot. It's a lot of suffering involved. And usually in most cases, usually people don't meet their twin flame and their, in their mortal lives until like later on in life. And that's because they have their own separate journeys they have to go through in order. Cause if you, if you and your twin flame come together before you've worked on your shit, it's not going to work. Cause you're a mirror of each other. It's going to be toxic and horrible um but so that's why you usually meet them later in life it's because you need each and individually work on your own stuff so what is what are the cards telling us though so it's definitely with a, a soulmate okay um okay so this is definitely somebody from her past i feel like a past life um it is somebody that she does have a uh, spiritual connection with um, that brings her a lot of balance and everything. And then I get it. This is a soulmate card. Um, and the king of pentacles. Um, it looks like it's a very strong, strong relationship. I'm gathering is a very strong relationship. I'm not getting anything that would indicate a twin flame union, but um, definitely soulmate and definitely a past life soulmate. So this is a good, I'm getting good vibes from this relationship. And that's amazing. Like I said, the twin flame union is not what it's always, what it's, it, it's hard. Very tough. Very, very it's tough. Very tough. I mean, again, again, and not every, not everybody has a twin because the twin is like what the separation of a soul, like a soul splits. So it literally is the same soul living in two different bodies. Um, and so therefore when you, you start to feel things that your twin is feeling and vice versa. And so it's rough it can be rough. So, um, and that's not, you know, and, and soulmate relationships are wonderful. They're beautiful relationships. There's so many people that are, have very healthy, extremely loving, beautiful relationships with their soulmates. So uh, yeah, we don't, I don't want anybody to like freak out about the whole twin flame thing. If, if you're, if you, and some twin flames won't ever be together romantically, they'll just work together or they'll, they'll do a mission together. Um, that's whatever agreement most twin flames do end up together romantically because that's part of their soul contract as well. And that's that putting, that's, that's where we get. So if we go back and to I like, Plato. I can explain this too, Bryce, where the ones that are coming into union in this particular time period, I'll tread lightly on what I'm saying here are generally from like, uh, the, they're like the original, original souls, um, the oldest. So there's original twin flames and then there's branch off twin flames, I believe is what I've been doing a lot of reading on this. And uh, so um, the ones that are coming back in union are like the Lyran and I think possibly some Palladian, maybe some Syrian um, because the Lyrans also um, incarnated on those particular planets too. These were the um, souls that were separated during the time of Atlantis um, specifically to raise the vibrational frequency of earth. Yeah. And so this might get a little bit like over like People might think this is kind of crazy. So we also look at like the Lyran group. Um, you've got two different auras with the Lyran group. You have the gold and you have the silver. Um, the gold carries these concept of Kundalini where the silver carries um, the, the timeline power. And so them coming together sexually is what kind of shifts a vibrational change within um, our realm that we live in now. I know that sounds 
pr- probably pretty kooky, but if you read about it, it, it starts to make more sense. Um, and so, yeah. So, so again, I don't, I, I don't, if, if you don't know if you're in a twin flame, if you listen, if you have a twin flame, you will find your twin flame at some point, it will become apparent. But if you, if you don't, it's, it's not, then you have a soulmate and that's beautiful. It's, it's actually probably people who are with their soulmates are probably having a lot more peaceful life than those of us who have a twin flame. So yes. And a lot of those who have a twin flame right now are a lot of them are like, we're in a, a marriage with either a karmic or a soulmate. God is ripping that away. God is, is, is totally separating um, those people from that person because that change has to be made in order to go forward. And it could be one of those things like you have no idea what the hell is going on, how you even got there, but let God do God's work. <laughs> That's yeah. what I can say to that. Yeah. And a karmic for those that, uh, that don't know what that is. That's a person that comes into your life to teach you a lesson. And sometimes those relationships are very toxic, um, but they teach you we've all had karmics in our lives. So you can, so, so Nicole, if you're with your soulmate, then God bless you because you probably have a very peaceful, loving, loving relationship. And that's amazing. You know? So, so just, yeah, that's amazing that you have the the beautiful partner that you've been together with such a long time and you have this beautiful children and, you know, all these synchronicities like that's so beautiful. So don't even worry about the whole twin flame thing, because if you guys are solid, then you're solid you know, and so uh, it just comes down to ha- your happiness and, and if you're your soul's mission and what you agree to. So, all right, guys, well, we will pick up with this next week with the rest of your questions. We'll put a little marker um, where, where we left off so we can get to more people next week. Once again, if you want to show Stephanie some appreciation, her uh, Venmo links will be down in the description box below. Should we pull, should we just do one spread to see? So today's Friday. So let's see what's today, the fourth, Let's see what mon- the, the week of starting Monday 7th is going to look like for the collective. I'll pull and you can pull just to end this off. So just collectively. I got flying cards. They're flying everywhere, like literally. <laughs> okay. The jumpers. the jumpers are like, look at me, look at me, look at me. I love jumpers because then I feel like it's more divinely orchestrated rather than me pulling from the top of the deck. Okay. Oh, I got that favorite card of yours, Bryce. Happy ending. Are we all getting a happy ending next week? <laughs> well, I don't know. It's like the last card that I pulled. <laughs> okay. So it looks like there's a lot of changes that are going to be going forward. Um, it, might, it might get a little crazy. I don't know. Um, but that's like a major arcana card right there. So that's something that changes for like... It's, it's not a temporary change. It's a life-changing change. And then we have, um, well, this could be a lot of us working together for the collective. So, um, which it, a lot of us are already doing anyways. This is uh, more clarity. Um, I'm, I'm almost wondering if more truth is going to come out in the, um, in the mainstream media um, with that particular card because swords are words and thoughts. So, like, clarity truth coming out into our tvs um it does look like we might feel a little bit blocked and um kind of in limbo with certain things too so i'm i'm not getting like a i'm I'm getting there are changes that that might be under the surface but not exactly anything that is going to make us feel like maybe things are moving um as fast as we would like and then I do get the Ace of Cups, which is passion. I wonder if it, okay, Bryce, I see where your, your face is going with this. Okay. In a non, in, 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 a, in an innocent way, in a non um, sexual, sexual way, <laughs> um, I have a strange feeling that ha- this might have something to do with the trucker thing going on. There's a lot of passion going into that. Lots. They're in Atlanta today right now. So really I'm not leaving my house though. Atlanta traffic is already awful. So um, I know where they are though. So, and if you're in Atlanta area, you could just look on Vernon Jones Instagram and you'll see all that stuff. So I kind of got the same thing, Stephanie. So I pulled actually pulled seven cards, six layout, and then one to clarify. So I got the two of swords, which is kind of maybe starting a little frustrated, a little blocked on something that we've been all kind of been toiling away at. 
But then we've mm -hmm. got the John Travolta card, uh, the Nine of Cups, that where you're going to get what you want. Uh, we're collectively going to get what we want. And then that brings me to the second row with the Tower card, which is, I think, something we all want is that Tower moment. Um, stand your ground once that happens. Because the Six of Wands come, which that's writing into victory. And so I asked for a clarification card, which I got the Star card, which means things we've been working on, things we've healed, everything we've wanted coming to fruition. So we'll see. And again, we'll, see. well, not that we go by the uh, astrology, but that is the Aquarian card as well. So Aquarian it's card, Aquarius. Yes. Yep. Age of Aquarius. Yes, that is my card. That's an Aquarian that's my card. So um, the Naked Lady, of course, it would be Naked Lady on the front, wouldn't it? <laughs> on the Aquarian card. <laughs> um, yeah. Tarot cards have some images on them that, you know, a lot of the people that are on the cards really don't wear a lot of clothes. <laughs> I think the wow. most clothing I've ever seen on anybody with um, any of the decks is your um, Jungian card deck with the queens and everything like that. Those queens are so dressed up. Yeah, like they're, they have like clothing up to their neck. Yeah, they do. They're very well dressed. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of dressed. She's kind of dressed. The Queen of Pentacles. Yeah. 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 It's always the star all right. card and all those that don't, the, the people don't have a lot of clothes on. Yeah. I mean, down here in Georgia, we don't wear a lot of clothes because it's damn hot most of the time. So <laughs> I'm freezing up here. I'm ready to leave Connecticut. Get me oh, out of here. Out. Like, it's out. I mean, it's going to be 80 degrees this week here in Atlanta. So lucky you. I want my palm tree. <laughs> it's going to be so hot soon though. I mean, it is literally like you sweat more than a whore in church when the summertime. So. <laughs> oh, brace. Oh, brace. Anyways. I mean, all right guys so thank you so much for joining us today we'll be back next week with some more of your questions um coming up on my channel monday mystery will be aired on monday and then i'm also going to be shooting again with sean stone and Catherine edwards over meditation and then i have a surprise guest on monday i'm going to be recording with based on a video that i shared on my twitter feed last week another um exposer we'll say and he is actually here in atlanta with me and i thank you guys to all the followers uh nicole especially you guys found him i got into contact with him and we're going to be shooting together on monday and so that'll probably be aired on tuesday once i get through the editing process so thank you so much guys we love you all big bear hugs and hashtag don't worry talk soon bye guys <laughs>